OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here on a Friday afternoon. I appreciate that. Uh, today, we're going to talk about finding and curating OERs. So lots and lots of information out there. So we're going to look at uh, briefly what's out there and how we can um, compile it in an organized manner. So my name is Diana Vera Alba. I'm an OTAN subject matter expert. I'm also an ESL faculty and OER coordinator at San Diego College of Continuing Education. Uh, so a little bit about myself. I've been an online instructor, uh, teacher, trainer since 2012. Um, I have taught in the modalities of distance ed, hybrid, high flex, and fully online courses. Um, my experience as a trainer includes online faculty mentoring, OER and CAEP coordinator at my district, Canvas course design trainer, accessibility trainer, OER and zero textbook cost trainer, and OTAN subject matter expert. So in my free time, I enjoy gardening, photography, and I love animals. So I have lots of pets. And there's Penny. I don't know. I was wondering where she went. Um, so before we get started, I want to know how familiar or comfortable you are with Creative Commons licenses. So if, we, if you can please vote in chat and type one, if you are not familiar with Creative Commons licenses, type two, if you are somewhat familiar with Creative Commons licenses, and type three, if you are very familiar with Creative Commons licenses. All right, thank you for voting. Thank you. All right, that's great. This helps me pace this presentation because I do have a lot of slides. I also have a lot of information to go over. Um, so I do see a lot of twos, maybe a one and a three, great. So I can kind of fly through that portion of the presentation. Um, of course, um, you can raise your hand or um, I don't mind if you raise your hand while I'm speaking or, or post the question in um, chat and I will stop for your questions. Okay, so thank you very much for that. So today's topics, we're going to look at how you should share your personal OERs or how you can share your personal OERs. We're going to look at choosing the Creative Commons license that's right for you. And it varies depending on the resource. So some of my resources, I license some CC BY, some, some of them I license some CB, CB BY SA. Um, so it really depends on the actual resource. Um, you don't have to use the same license for all your resources, but I'm going to show you the Creative Commons chooser, which is really, really nice. Um, uh, product that you can use and it's free. We're going to look at attributing your own work and the work of others. Okay, um, there's a lot of information here. So I added a five minute break here if you want it. If you don't want it, we can power it through. We'll, we'll know when we get there. I'll let you vote on that. Um, we're also going to look at how to share your OERs with others. So we're going to look at one of many tools out there, but OER Commons has a great tool, and we're going to briefly look at that. Um, we're also going to look at how to build a digital OER ZTC library for your institution or for your students. Um, so we're gonna look at the differences between repositories and referatories and using Canvas as the LMS for um, building your library. So there are other options out there like Google Sites, um, Google Classroom, um, but I'm going to show you my example that I created for our faculty using Canvas. 
So let's get started quickly with a definition of what open educational resources are. And this is from the US Office of Educational Technology, their 2010 technology plan. So open educational resources are teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license. That's one of those Creative Commons licenses or public domain that permits sharing, accessing, and repurposing, including for commercial purposes and collaborating with others. Okay, so this is really fitting, um, covers all aspects of OERs, what they are, how they can be used, and how you can share them with others. So let's take a look briefly at the Creative Commons licenses. Um, I've shared, if you've been at my other presentations, I've shared other um, charts like this. Um, I like to um, include many different styles of charts. Um, depending on your liking, there are many out there. Um, so this one was nice and concise. Um, at the top, you notice the green arrows going up. These licenses have more per permissions. That means more things that you can do with that resource. And as you go down the list, the licenses towards the bottom have fewer permissions or a little bit more restrictive. Okay. Then the second column, of course, are the icons with the licenses. And to the right of each of the icons are some definitions. OK, so this chart was um, licensed CC BY, which is this license here. So as long as you give permission to the original author, you can use this in your presentation. You can use this with your faculty. You can use it in your uh, Canvas page uh, or uh, or site. Okay. So I'll go quickly through each of those licenses. So the first one is public domain. And public domain sometimes has the CC0 spelled out, or sometimes it just has the zero with the circle around it and the public domain. Okay. And this is the least restrictive. It means that no attribution or credit for the original author is needed. So you can adapt it in any way you wish, even if it if you use it commercially. Okay, so there are many reasons why um, we see this type of license. So um, perhaps a public domain book such as those in the Project Gutenberg site. It could be a book with no copyright. Um, maybe originally it was created with a copyright, maybe it wasn't. Um, but most of these books, especially on Project Gutenberg site, uh, are books where the copyright has expired. Okay, so um, Let me get my, let me get when does the copyright expire? So as a general rule, for works created after January 1st, 1978, copyright protection lasts for the life of the author plus an additional 70 years. Now, this is a general rule. There are some exceptions, and it really depends on the country. So one of the lengthiest copyright is from Mexico and other countries as well. Um, so. Um, if you are interested in copyright, I did add the link for FAQs on copyright down at the bottom of the slide. And if you're curious, yes, I am going to share the slides at the end of the presentation. So what are open educational resources? Again, they must include the five R's, which are these permissions. So you should have the right to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute the resource. So if you have these five R's, then that resource is considered a true OER. Okay. There are resources that are missing the remix and revise, for example. Those are still great resources. Um, an example of that are TED Ed videos. Those are open for you to use uh, in your classroom. 
uh, open to use and share with your colleagues, you just can't change them. You cannot revise them, you cannot remix them, but there are still great resources. So quickly, I'm going to kind of, since most of you are familiar with um, Creative Commons licenses, I'm going to go through this portion a little quickly, but again, it's there for you in the presentation. So CC BY means that you must give credit attribution to the original author. So CC BY includes those five R's that we just talked about. You can adapt and use this resource commercially if you wish. However, attribution is not negotiable. So attribution, you must give credit to the original author, okay? And I'm giving credit down here at the bottom. So CC by SA is a CC by license plus the share alike. This means you must attribute it and share any adaptations you make with the same CC by SA license. So CC by SA includes the five R's. So you are able to remix it. You are able to change it. Um, if you do make those changes, your new revisions or your new changes have to hold this CC by SA license. That's what this means. CC by NC is a CC by license plus non-commercial. So here's that non-commercial uh, logo. And this means you can use it with attribution you can adapt it, but you cannot sell it for a profit uh, from it except to recuperate costs of printing, for example. And CC by NC includes the five R's. CC by NCSA is a CC by license plus non-commercial uh, and plus share alike. And this means you can use it with attribution. You can adapt it but you cannot sell it or profit from it. And you must share it again using CC by NCSA. Remember when we when you see the SA, your new revisions have to include the exact same license that the original author had. So this license also includes the five R's. So it is considered a true OER. So now we're going to get into if you notice, I had kind of a green light around the licenses, the first four. So now we're going to get into some that have the red around the license, and we're, we're going to see what that means. So CC by ND is a CC by license plus no derivatives. This means that you can use it with attribution, you can retain it, you can share it, but you cannot adapt or make any changes to it. So CC by ND does not include the five R's, right? It's, it's missing the remix and revise, right? So you cannot make any changes to it, but you can still use it and share it. And the last license, which is the most restrictive is CC by NC ND. This is the license that Ted Ed holds, okay? So it's a CC by license plus non-commercial plus no derivatives. So this means you can use it with attribution. You can retain it, keep it. You can share it, but you cannot adapt it or make any changes to it. You cannot sell it or profit from it except to recuperate costs for printing. So CC by NC does and D does not include all the five R's, okay? Because of the non-derivatives, no changes, it has to remain the same, then it, it does not uh, include those five R's, okay? Any questions as I went through that rather quickly? Okay, don't see any changes. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> Yes. Um, so Ted Ed holds, uh, Ted Ed videos hold this license. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's continue. So we're going to watch a quick video, just under two minutes, about Creative Commons licenses. This video will introduce you to Creative Commons licenses, which make copyright easier to understand. Let's say you create something. 
this thing could be creative, like a picture of your cat, or scholarly, like an essay about cats. Because you are the creator of this picture or essay, copyright allows you to decide what people can do with your creation. When you are the copyright holder, people have to ask you for permission before putting your cat picture into a PowerPoint or adapting your cat essay into a movie. Getting permission can be time-consuming and complicated for both the creator and the user. This is where Creative Commons can help. Creative Commons exists to make permissions explicit and straightforward. Creative Commons licenses use icons and simple language so that creators can make their intentions clear and users can be certain that their use of a work is legal. These different licenses help people understand if and how they can use, share, or build on a work. This icon means that only non-commercial uses are permitted, so no one can profit from using your picture. This icon means that no one can make changes to the original work, such as photoshopping a dog into your cat picture. This icon means that someone can change your work, but their version must be shared under the same license as yours. All Creative Commons licenses give credit to the original creator, preserving your reputation as a creative genius while the world engages with your work. Licenses can be attached to most things, including blog posts, images, artworks, journal articles, and more. To learn more about Creative Commons licenses, visit the Creative Commons website or check out some of the other videos in our series. Okay, any questions? This video will introduce. Sorry about that. Any questions about the Creative Commons licenses? All right. Great. Um, so, why and how should you attribute OERs? So, attri attribution is important. It's part of the buy in the CC license. That's where you give credit to the original author. Um, and it's important because OER identifying the um, author, you can legally borrow someone else's work or identify the permission level. Uh, you give others to use your own work. So now that you can identify the license and their permitted use, we can look at how to correctly add attributions to your work and the work of others. Um, so I do have a question, is Creative Commons only used for digital work? No, actually, it's not only for digital work. You can add it to a book that is um, published and printed or a resource. Uh, it could be a worksheet. Um, so yeah, it's also for printed material. Mm -hmm. And you will see it in, in books more, more so now than before. Mm -hmm. Um, so when attributing work, remember the acronym TASL, okay? Because these are the four things you're going to need when you are attributing somebody's work. So you need T for title of the resource, A for author, so who created that resource, S for source, so where did you find the resource, and L for license, what type of Creative Commons or perhaps public domain um, did that author intend to use? Okay, so you're going to need those four things in order to attribute someone's work or your own work. Um, so some open resources provide a ready-made attribution. So for example, I like using Pixabay for um, images. Um, Unsplash, there are many others I like to use, but in particular, Pixabay and Unsplash, when you download the image or resource, because they have more than just images on their site, they automatically give you the attribution. So that's super easy to use, right? Because you download the, the resource, and then um, as you, when you download, this pop-up comes up and you just copy that um, attribution and paste to the bottom of the resource. So that's really um, convenient. Um, so this image at the right had a ready-made attribution, and these attributions typically appear near the image when downloading the resource from the website. 
So for resources that do not provide ready-made attributions, there are several attribution builders out there. Um, the, what, the two that I um, like are the Open Attribution Builder, and this can be used to attribute your own work or the work of others, okay? And for those of you that are not really familiar with the licenses yet, or you're not sure what you want to add, what license you want to add to your own work, I recommend the Creative Commons License Chooser. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. And I do hear somebody has noise in their background. So if you have noise, if you could please um, mute yourself. Thank you. All right, so this is the Creative Commons Chooser, and this it's in beta form right now. This, well, they have, let me step back for a moment. They have a chooser available, and they've created a new and improved, which is in beta form, but we can still use it. I will go ahead and add this in chat, and it's also on the slides. Um, so you don't have to go there unless you want to follow along. Um, so. This asks a series of questions, and many of them are yes or, yes or no questions. So as you answer the questions, you will see a pop-up here on the right, and it starts building your um, license for you, okay? And it's beautifully done, so let me show you. So the first question, do you know which license you need? If you answer yes, it's going to tell you, okay, basically you don't need this chooser, just go ahead and add the license to your um, resource. Okay, but if you're not sure which license you want to choose, you're going to choose no and then click next. Okay, so do you want attribution for your work? So when someone else uses your work, do you want them to give you credit? If you answer no, then it's going to automatically give you the uh, public domain license, okay? So here's the logo, here's what it looks like. You can click on see the deed because you can add this to your um, resource. You can just grab that link and add it to your resource along with the logo and you're done, okay? Um, so remember, with uh, public domain, the creator is giving up their copyright. You're allowing reusers to distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon the material in any medium or format, even for commercial purposes, without giving you credit for your work. Okay, so um, that is zero restrictions on this um, license. So if you say, well, you know, I still want to get attribution, I still want some kind of credit on my work, then you're going to choose yes, and it already popped up with a license, right? So there's CC BY, okay? I'm still going to choose next because I may, this may change depending on um, my next questions. So I'm going to choose next. Do you want to allow others to use your work uh, commercially? So if you say yes, it stays the same. Nothing changes because with CC BY, people can use your work for commercial purposes. If you say no, then it adds the symbol with the dollar sign with the slash through it, meaning for non-commercial purposes only. Okay, still has the CC BY. You can uh, get credit for your original work. Others can distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon. They just can't make money or profit off, off of it. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there and choose next. Next question, do you want to allow others to remix, adapt, or build upon your work? If you say yes, license stays the same. If you say no, uh-oh, it added the non-derivatives, okay? So that now I'm not allowing downstream users to make any uh, changes to my work, okay? So that's what the ND, no derivatives, no adaptations of your work uh, is permitted, okay? I'm gonna say, yep, yeah, I'm gonna allow downstream users to adapt my work. So I'm back with my CC BY NC license. Okay, I'm going to choose next. 
The next one, do you want to allow others to share adaptations of your work under any terms? So if I say yes, they can use whatever license they want with their remixed work. Doesn't change my license at all. If I say no, it adds the share alike, the SA, okay? So remember, this means that others can still reuse, remix, adapt, build upon for non-commercial purposes, because I still kept that on there. But if others modify or adapt my materials, they must license the modified materials, so the new materials, under the identical terms that I had on my original work, okay? Questions so far? Okay, all right. And then next, so that's the end of the license questions. So now I have my license, okay? If I choose next, I'm going to confirm that I own or have authority to license the work. So I, it's my own original work or I have the authority to license the work. That means it could have been a CC BY, which gave me permission to create a whole new license. So if the original work that I am remixing had the CC BY license, I have the authority to license the work, okay? So I'm gonna mark yes. So you have to mark a yes to all of these, otherwise it will not let you use uh, this license. So I have read and understand the terms of the license. The terms of the license appear here on the deed. So you want to make sure that you understand, fully understand what this license means. And if you don't remember, you just click on the deed and it will take you to the Creative Commons site where it is uh, defined and tells you exactly the terms of this license and what it means. Okay. So I say, yes, I have read and I understand the terms. And the last one, I understand that Creative Commons licensing is not revocable. So once you add this license to your work and share it out to the public, to your friend, to a colleague, to your students, the license becomes not revocable. Okay, if I have not shared it yet and I change my mind, I can go back and change my mind before I share it out. But once I share it out, it's not revocable. Okay, so I understand that if I add this license, it is not revocable. And that goes for any of the licenses. Okay, so I'm going to choose next. Now I'm going to add the title of my work. So I'm going to call this Diana's. Oops, Diana Vera Alba's masterpiece. <laughs> okay, I am the creator of the work, so I'm going to type my name. If my resource appears on a website or um, an, an open site where um, the public has access to it, then I'm going to add that link here or a link to my profile. If I have um, an online profile, I can add that as well. I'm not going, I don't have to, I'm not going to add it. And I'm going to add the year I created it. And once I press done, this kind of shakes to let you know here is your license, okay? So now I can copy this as is with the CC BY and CSA link on there. So this is my full attribution. If I want, if I don't want the abbreviation, I can toggle over to the right on this blue button and it spells it out. So instead of it saying CC BY and CSA, now it's spelled out. Attribution, non-commercial, share alike, 4.0, international license. Okay, so it depends on your preference, which one you want to use. Okay, so you can copy this. You can um, add it to your resource. Okay, there's also the HTML version. If you want to add um, HTML to like Canvas or something like that with your license, you can. 
even on canvas i usually just grab this or um i don't use the html but you can if you want and xmp i have never used but it downloads metadata for you if you if you choose that option okay but here is everything nicely built um, just by answering a series of questions of what I want and don't want my downstream users to you to do with my resource. Okay, so this is for a website and Jenny, you were asking about print work. So if I want to add this to print work, I just toggle and I copy this. Okay, so that's the abbreviated version or the full license name version. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Jenny. So it says it, it appears I should be very careful before I add license since I can't change it later. Right. You can change it later as long as you didn't share it out. Once you share it out, it's cemented on your work. Okay. And that's to save the integrity of your work and the integrity of these licenses, right? Because if you share it out with CC BY and later on you say, wait, whoops, no, I don't want it used commercially. Well, it's kind of too late because somebody already has your work with that CC BY where you gave permission for uh, commercial use, right? So you don't want to confuse the public. So that's why they have that on there. Um, and then the next question, should I add that on every page of my worksheet? You can if you want. Um, so if it's a worksheet that created, you created on uh, Word or um, Google, you can just add it to the, as a footnote. Mm -hmm. And then it'll add it to every page for you. Uh, now for um, Canvas. Um, for the Canvas uh, page that I created or Canvas account that I created, I only added it to my home page. And that's because that Canvas uh, account or any um, LMS digital library that you create will have multiple licenses because you will probably not own everything in there if you use it as a repository. So if you add resources for your faculty, those resources have to maintain the original license of the author. So I only add my license to the home page because that's the only thing I created. Everything else is a resource that somebody else created and I add the license of that resource mm -hmm. to that particular uh, resource. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? Okay, all right. So I hope you found that tool useful. I loved this tool, especially if you're kind of not sure, right? And like I said, you don't have to have add the same license to every piece of work that you create. You can change it for each uh, uh, work that you create. All right, so that was the Creative Commons License Chooser. There's also something called an open attribution builder. I'm not going to go over it here, but I do have a video um, at the end of this presentation that I created for faculty at my district that shows you step by step on how to use that open attribution builder. So for the open attribution builder, you already have to kind of know which license you want to use. Or if you're attributing somebody else's work, that's easy. They already chose a license. All you're doing is taking their license and adding it to that section in the template. So it's also a very easy to use template. Just remember that you need tassel, right? The title, the author, the source, and the license. And the template, you just plug it in and it creates the license uh, attribution for you. All right, so we're going to look at using OER Commons to share your resources with others. So let's say you've already created these great resources and now you want to share them out. Okay, you've added, you've gone through the attribution builder or the one that we just, um, that I just demonstrated. Now your resource is licensed, it's ready to be shared with others. Um, maybe you've shared it with your colleagues, but you want to share it out in the open world. Um, so OER Commons is a great public digital library. It's a repository. 
That means that they store lots and lots of resources, uh, open educational resources, and users can explore, create, and collaborate with educators around the world to improve curriculum and provide access to free resources for students. Okay, so OER Commons is a great, great tool uh, for you to um, share. The other thing I like about OER Commons that I haven't seen in other repositories is that it has an adult education filter. Okay, so most of us here teach in an adult education or continuing education uh, institution. And this uh, OER Commons repository has a filter for that. So that's really nice. So in order for you to use OER Commons to either um, save or um, add your resource, you do need to register. It's free to create an account with OER Commons. So you need to do that first before you add a resource. And then we're going to watch the introducing open author video on the OER Commons site. Okay, so let's go to the site uh, OER Commons, just so you know that each of these sections are within OER Commons, but if you want to go straight to register later on when you um, are viewing this, you can click on register, create an account. I'll also show you on the main site where that's at. And then the OER Commons video is linked here, but it's also on the main site. So let's take a look at OER Commons. So when you get to the site, looks like this. This is where you could start your search for OERs, okay? Um, to sign in or register is here. So if you choose sign in, I already have an account, so I would sign in. If I'm a new user, um, I would register here. Some institutions already have OER Commons accounts. So if, and they what they do is they um, house everyone's, they try to house everyone in their institution's resources together, just kind of to keep track and have their own little mini repository for their institution. So you can do that if, if, if your institution does that. I just registered on my own. So you choose register and it's very simple. First name, last name, email, create a password, confirm it, and then claim you're not a robot. Okay, so very easy. Once you register, you have several benefits. So once you register, you can add your own resources, but you can also save resources that you find. So for example, I do this a lot. I go through and I look to see, I help other faculty find resources. If it's something that I want to add to my OER Canvas account, I can save it here. If, I, if I'm doing a, a search for one topic and maybe I find 20 different resources and I didn't go through all of them, but I'm just quickly like making my own to-do list, I can add them here before I download them. I can add them to my account and then save them for later, delete them, keep them. Um, so that is a nice way to not use your own bandwidth, use your own memory on your computer. You can use their cloud storage, okay? OER's cloud storage. So those two benefits there. Uh, so if you are ready to um, upload resources, remember you have to create an account first. And then once you create the, that account, you can go straight to the get started here. Um, I recommend that you watch the video. So let's quickly watch that uh, video. It's a five minute video and you'll see how easy it is to use their tool. Welcome to our open educational resource community a network of dedicated educators committed to improving teaching and learning. In this video, we'll help you get started using our OER authoring tool, OpenAuthor. We will learn how to author a new resource from scratch and how to remix an existing resource. To begin, make sure you're logged in before you click on Add OER in the global navigation bar. Select OpenAuthor from the pop-out menu. This will open a new draft of a resource for you to edit. We recommend you first give your resource a clear title and upload an image. Next, you can begin adding structure to your resource using sections. 
Give the sections a name and add content within each. This can include writing the main body of content that students will see, attaching resources related to the section, and articulating any specific instructions for the person teaching this resource in the Instructor Notes area. You can also import from Google Docs and OneDrive to add content to your section. Within the Content Editor, there are various tools to support the design and creation of your resource, including pasting text from Word, formatting headings, stylizing the font, adding numbers, bullets, indents or quotes, and changing the alignment. To make your resource more dynamic and interactive, you can add hyperlinks, images, tables, video, mathematical equations, and definitions. While editing your resource, it will automatically be saved to your drafts in your profile. You can click Save and Preview to get a sense of what your resource will look like when published. To support collaboration, we have a feature that allows you to add co-authors by clicking on View and Manage Authors. Search for your co-author's name or email. Then select the box next to their name and click Add Co-Author to give permission to others to edit your resource. Before publishing, we recommend utilizing the Accessibility Checker on each section to ensure your resource is accessible to all learners. When you click on the checker, it will identify any accessibility issue within your section. When you're ready to publish your resource, click Publish and describe your resource clearly so that others can find it more easily. Select an open license and add any relevant standards or keywords. When you've added all the information needed to help make your resource more discoverable to others, click Publish. Resources that are published in OpenAuthor are available to users in multiple download formats, including the Braille-ready EPUB 3, PDF, Thin Common Cartridge, and SCORM. Now that you've seen how to author a new resource from scratch, let's see how you can remix an existing resource using the authoring tool. When you find a resource that is remixable, simply click on the Remix button while viewing the resource. This will create your own copy of the resource in the authoring tool. Next, give your new version a different title and begin customizing for your specific teaching and learning needs. When you have edited your remix and are ready to publish, click Publish. Be sure to update your description before publishing by citing the changes you have made to the original resource in the descriptive fields. To find resources that have been published using the authoring tool, select the Open Author 2.0 box under the Content Source and the Advanced Search. We believe each member of our OER community has their own unique expertise and experience to contribute. That is why we developed our authoring tool to support the creation and sharing of educational resources. As with any new tool, the more practice you have, the easier it will be to use OpenAuthor. Remember, you can always go back and edit and republish your resource. In fact, we encourage you to update and improve your resource over time. Thank you for being a contributor to our OER community. Happy authoring! Welcome to our Open Educational Resource Community. Okay. All right. Any questions about that tool? So I've uploaded resources. It's actually very easy to use. Um, so that is just one of many. Uh, I'm going to show you another huge repository is Merlot. 
And Merlot is similar to OER Commons look in that the search, you can begin searching for open educational resources at the top. So Merlot is considered both a repository where they house many, many, many resources. So they have over 100,000 resources in their site. But they're also a referatory, meaning that they refer you outside of Merlot for other resources. So let me show you what that looks like and what that means. So I'm sorry, let me go back. I added ESL reading as my search. So I'm going to search for ESL reading resources. So here is the Merlot collection. There are 194 resources for me to, to look through under ESL reading, okay? This is the referatory where they're referring you out to other libraries on that same topic. So if I choose other libraries, there are one through 10 results of other repositories and there are more and more and more. There are actually quite a bit of other repositories or other websites where ESL reading OER exists, okay? So this is a nice way for you to discover other sites that you could search in, okay, for those, for that same topic of resources. So these are other libraries like Merlot. And then the last one is just a general web search, okay? So this is the first 100 and there are lots and lots of resources. So this is the wild web, right? So um, it says Merlot is always displaying up to 100 results regardless of filter, okay? So if that is too many for you to look through, you can use their filters here. So um, in the wild web, they don't have the Creative Common filter. Within the Merlot collection, there are lots of filters that you can add, okay? So that is the difference between what a repository is, where they house the resource, and referatory, where they're referring you out to other resources or other sites that may house these resources you're looking for, okay? So I just wanted to point that out because we're going to look at what you want to do with your site. Okay, we'll look at that later on. So I'm back at the homepage uh, for Merlot. If you scroll down, Merlot also has their own um, uh, builder and they also have a tutorial. So if you want to add resources um, to Merlot, then again, I recommend that you watch the video. They have a very nice content builder, just like OER Commons. Um, one of the questions that I, oops, maybe I do have a question. I've used a website called liveworksheets.com. I'm not sure if there is a license being used. Should I attribute in this case? <clears throat> Jenny, you want to look at the um, terms of use on liveworksheets.com to see if they own that resource or you own that resource. But we could talk about that, um, Jenny, uh, later on. Um, but yes, you want to see what the terms of use are on live worksheets, if they allow you to license your own work or not, once you add it there. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, oh, what I was saying is, I get a question, if I add my resources to OER Commons, should I also add it to another repository like Merlot? And my answer is yes, because the more repositories you add your resources to, the more they will be shared out, okay? So if that is your goal, to share it with as many people as you can, um, I would do that, especially if it's a book. Okay, so um, some faculty at my district 
including myself, are um, revising books. And so we want to share it once we're finished, we want to share it um, to as many people as possible, as many faculty and many students out there as possible. So we will likely upload to several reposit repositories. Okay. Any questions about sharing out to these repositories? Okay, so I know I went th through that quickly, but again, you have the links here and um, you can um, use them. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the real fun stuff. So now that you've gathered all these resources and you've created your own resources, you can build your own digital library, right? So whether it's for you and your students or you and your colleagues or your site, um, there's many ways to go around building your own repository referatory, okay? Um, so I did this for my faculty. I am the OER coordinator at my district. And so that was one of the steps that I wanted to take is not only teach our faculty about OERs, what they are, how to use them, but also give them a starting point when they are researching, kind of like nudge them to look what's out there, look what I found for your discipline, and hopefully um, get them excited about using these types of resources. Um, so you can when you are building an OER or ZTC, ZTC stands for zero textbook cost, and that's usually a, um, attributed to textbooks. Um, so you want to think about the organization of your materials um, and to get ideas. You can go to college and university OER sites. So most US colleges and universities have an OER section in their website. And so you can go there for inspiration on how to organize materials. Once you are inspired and, and you're ready to go, um, you want to use either an LMS like Canvas, um, Google um, Classroom, or something like that, or a website. So I used Canvas, and um, for my site, I use it as both a repository because I do have some resources. I don't have hundreds of thousands like Merlot and OER Commons, but I did want to have at least some for our faculty to look at. Um, but main, mostly mine is a referatory, so I refer faculty out to the sites where they can find um, resources um, in their discipline. You can house an OER course for your teachers in Canvas. That's the other nice thing. It can be a combination of a repository, referatory, and also a professional development section in your um, Canvas site. Um, and it can be maintained by your Canvas OER coordinator or, or campus OER coordinator or a resource teacher or some type of lead in your district that is hopefully going to do trainings like this for your faculty. So, oops, let me go back. So, yeah. So that was for organizations. And again, for ideas and inspiration, I would go to look at other college universities and OER sites. Um, when you are organizing your materials, think about organizing your materials by discipline so that it's easy for your faculty to find and to use. Um, you can use topics like Creative Commons licenses and maybe my slides, or maybe you create your own slides from my slides on um, teaching faculty about the Creative Commons licenses. Um, you can link out to attributions or attribution builder, like what um, we saw today. You can house different types of materials, so you can categorize them by books, images and artwork, and other repositories. So I'll show you how I did that on my site. And like I mentioned, I created a site that was built in Canvas, and it 
has been shared on the commons. So if you are a um, Canvas user, you can find my OER for SDCCD uh, Canvas site by searching for Diana Vera Alba in Canvas Commons. Okay. So um, that is available for you and it is licensed. So it is free for you to use, but I'm going to show it to you. Um, before we go there, um, I want to talk about our, I have some resources here for you, sorry, about toolkits to build a digital OER ZTC library. So again, you can use Canvas. Um, some uh, folks use Google Sites. That's also a nice open um, way to share things out. Um, you can also use design software like Canva to pretty up your, um, your site. H5P, I have an asterisk because I use City Labs. I kind of use an, a combination of City Labs and Canvas, and you'll see in just a moment, but I have those linked out if you're interested in looking at those. Um, you can add relevant resources to your site, like OER lessons, OER books, OER resources, training modules, vid videos. I have a combination of all of these. Um, I wanted to give faculty um, different ideas on how to present their resources. So I have a combination of all of these. Um, you can decide if you want your site to be a repository with all these items or a referatory that only links out or a combination of both. Okay, so I wanted to give you some ideas for building yours as well. Okay, so let's go to my site. And, oh, remember that you can use materials you find in OER for SDC CD Canvas Shell. So you can use any of the materials I have there. I've licensed it CC by SA. And uh, remember, this is the license that means you can adapt, attribute, you have to give me credit, right? You have to attribute it because it has the by, um, but you can uh, make adaptations of it. Um, and you must use the same license that I created if you're going to use my site. So let's take a look at it. And I'm going to show you the student view so you don't see my behind the scenes messiness. <laughs> okay, so when you arrive to my Canvas course, um, there is the home page here. I have um, some graphics, a welcome message here. Um, this is really important um, to create a quick video, uh, a tour of your Canvas shell or your site. It's really, really helpful for downstream users, for your faculty to know exactly how you organized it. Um, so um, we added that short video there. And then I have some quick access buttons. So if you hover over these, these are quick access buttons. Now, this is that um, um, Design Plus software that I used. Okay, so if you go to the um, Commons and you don't see these pretty little buttons, it's because I'm using software. Um, but you can create these buttons without the software. You can create these buttons on Google Draw. I've done that before for, for other Canvas shells. So you don't necessarily need the software. It's just kind of fun and useful to have it there, but it's not free. Okay, so I will pre premise with that. It is not a free software. Um, and then I have some information. Um, I I have a survey that I would like faculty to fill out when they come in. There's a general video about why to use OER and then um, information about my office hours and my contact information. Okay, so that's what's in my homepage. 
Um, so once faculty are familiar with the modules and the way it's organized in modules, they can use these quick access buttons, but I'm going to take you to modules so you could see how I organized it from the top to the bottom in the module section. So I have a section called OER coordinator resources. So this is both for myself and for faculty, because if they want to build out something, I have some resources for them to uh, use here. I have a section on Creative Commons licenses. Um, so if a faculty member, I'm Creative Commons certified. So if a faculty member is interested in getting their own certification, there's information for them here. There's information like I had for you in the presentation on the types of Creative Commons licenses. Um, so let me show you. I'll show you just a few of these pages so you kind of get an idea of what that looks like. So I, I love adding videos um, because that um, is a quick demo of what is to come. And so there's my quick under two minute video. I talk about the six Creative Commons licenses, green light, what green light, yellow light, and red light means on each of these. Um, and have the logo. If they want to use this logo, they can click on the PNG here and copy and paste that logo directly onto their resource if that's what they want to do. Um, the definition of this license is here. It's also linked out to the Creative Commons site and um, what you can do with this resource, what you must do. So as it goes down the list, it goes to the um, more restrictive licenses. Now with the red, what you cannot do. So I try to color code it and make it um, appealing and user friendly for our faculty. Okay, so that's um, this this one section on Creative Commons, the types of licenses. <clears throat> There's information on public domain, Creative Commons videos, and just general OER videos are here. Here's information on attribution. So I wrote an article for OTAN on how to attribute Creative Commons, how to attribute original work using Creative Commons licenses. So that is there. I also created um, how to use that attribution builder. It's also on my slides, but the video is here for faculty. And then um, this is my list of noun projects, noun project icons that I use. And what I did is I had a list that I was keeping for myself and I thought I should share this with others. Um, so these are icons that I frequently use. And what I did is I attribute, attributed those icons. And so if someone wants to use that icon, they can copy the icon and copy the attribution and it's ready for them to use. So I alphabetized it, it's many pages. I love using icons, but this is here for our faculty to use. If they don't want to use it from here, they can grab a copy. It's downloadable and they can save a copy for themselves. Okay. Actually, it's a Google Doc, so they can make their own copy and it'll stay in their um, drive. So let's go back to the modules. Um, and then there's a section, general section on finding and using OERs. Um, and then the OER presentations that I've done are here. I need to add more. Um, I send out a OER newsletter to our faculty and they are archived here. Um, and here are the OER repositories by topic. So these are image and artwork repositories, the ones with stars, because faculty ask me, which ones do you use the most? So I start the ones that I use the most, but all of these are great. Um, I should have starred Pixabay because that really is my go-to. I forgot to do that, but that is on there. Um, so these are repo repositories categorized by image and artwork, and then large repositories. So if faculty go to any of these, um, if they click in here, um, it doesn't just take them to the site. It also, I have an explanation of what it is, the link out, of course, an example of what they will see in the site. Okay. 
And um, here are uh, topics or sites for open access books. And then the last, or almost the, the last section, OER by discipline. So I have um, OER for various um, disciplines, not all disciplines, but various disciplines. So I will say I am not a librarian. I'm an ESL instructor who happens to love OERs. So I don't know everything about uh, the other disciplines. Faculty have helped me find um, resources as as I'm helping them find resources, they're helping me build this section of the site for them. So um, I am not a librarian and expert on it every, every discipline, but um, thanks to our faculty, they have helped me build this for, for all of us to share. So there are the different disciplines here. And then I teach ESL, so I know a lot of uh, topics in ESL, and there are um, ESL by different um, different courses. So, for example, if um, an ESL instructor wants to take a look at some resources, remember I said this is a repo both a repository and a referatory. So it's a repository because I am housing some resources for our faculty. I'll have the name of the resource, and these are in alphabetical order in here as well. Um, the title, the link out to the resource, if it's a book or something like that, I let them know what they can do with that resource. So this one's downloadable, it's available in digital format. I add the license so they know that up front, a little bit of information about that resource and um, any other additional um, resources or links out for that resource, okay? Some of these are a little bit longer. They have a little bit more. So for example, I teach reading. So there, I included a lot of resources for reading because I use a lot of different resources. Um, so there's books in here. Um, lots and lots of books um, for teachers to, to use at different levels, okay? <clears throat> but again, it's a combination of a referatory where I'm referring out and a repository where there's things that they can easily download in here if they'd like, if they like that uh, resource. Okay. And it keeps going. This is in alphabetical order again. I have some um, resources on healthcare, high school diploma, and high school equivalency. And then the last part of it is our re free resources. So these are resources that were shared with me um, by faculty when, when they come to my office hours or my, my um, presentations, they might've shared resources with me that are free, not necessarily licensed uh, as an OER, but, actually, but still good resources. Um, so there's uh, some resources here for games, for vocabulary resources and charts. Okay, any questions? Don't see any questions in chat. Okay, so if you want access to this and you use Canvas and you're not at my district, because if you're at my district, I could just add you on to this one, not a problem. But if you're not at my district, let me leave student view so the comments shows up. <clears throat> and you want access to this resource, all you have to do is go to comments here on the left uh, global navigation bar. And in search, you're gonna type my name, Diana Vera Alba, and there are a few things that I have um, uploaded. You're welcome to use any of them, but the resource is here. It's called OER for SDCCD. When you go in there, it's not gonna look like mine, remember, because I have that Design Plus software, but when you download it, at least it will be categorized for you, okay? and you can add or delete or remove things that do not apply for your district, or at least you have an idea of 
one version of uh, organization for um, this type of resource at your district. Okay, the license is here, CC by SA, right? So Creative Commons, oh, NC, sorry. Creative Commons, non-commercial, share alike. Okay, so I want you to use the same license, give me attribution and share it with others. Okay. Any questions about finding and downloading? Okay. All right, let's go back. All right, so um, on this page, I have some resources for you, um, general resources on Creative Commons licenses. Um, we looked at Merlot and OER Commons. So those, all of these are links out for you. The Noun Project, um, houses over 3 million, yes, 3 million free icons. Great, great resource um, if you like to use icons. There is a great OER toolkit that was shared with me. Um, let me show you what this looks. Ah, you need to make a copy. So you'll have a copy of this awesome resource that was shared with me at an OER conference. And it was created by Cheryl Coolier Casey. And it has lots and lots of links and resources. So if you want more resources for your um, OER library that you're going to be building for your faculty, there are tons and tons of resources and she has categorized them um, quite nicely here. So I believe there's eight pages. Yep, eight pages of resources from um, this wonderful OER librarian, I believe she is. Um, she just has tons and tons of resources, so have fun. Um, so that is um, her toolkit. Um, here is the link to that Open Attribution Builder from Open Washington, Pixabay, where I um, used a lot of these images that I had in my presentation. So they have images, videos, music, and more, and they're all openly licensed. Here are some videos, how to use the attribution builder. So how to use this attribution builder. I created a video for our faculty and I'm sharing it with you. What are Creative Commons licenses? That's that short two minute video that was in my presentation. I added it there. Oh, there's my attribution builder. <laughs> <laughs> video. So that walks you step by step on how to um, use the attribution builder that I didn't go over. So that one is here for you. It's a six minute, little over six minute video. Um, so this is a summary of what we went over. We looked at how to share your personal OERs, the types of designations and licenses, right? We looked at public domain and the six Creative Commons licenses. We also looked at attributing your own work and the work of others. So you can use um, an open attribution builder like the one I have in the video or the Creative Commons chooser that um, uh, we looked at today. There are others out there as well. Um, so all you have to do is, um, if you're interested, Google, open attribution builder and you will get others as well if um, if you want to look at others. And then how to share with others. We looked at sharing in OER Commons. Um, I also showed you Merlot. We looked at that open author from OER Commons. And then um, lastly, we looked at how to build a digital OER ZTC library. Um, we talked about organization of the site and looking at uh, my Canvas example. But I also recommend, like I mentioned, um, most colleges and universities have an OER site. Take a look at theirs and see how they organized it. And, um, you know, maybe it'll just be a one page or on your website, and maybe that's all your faculty need. Um, so it's up to you how you want to create um, your resource library for your faculty. And I want to thank you for being here today on this lovely Friday afternoon. And thank you for attending our Finding and Curating OER webinar. <laughs>